story recap here. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, horror, and mystery film called The Deep House. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Ben and Tina are a young couple who's decided to travel to Europe to look for haunted houses. Using their cameras and other equipment, they would film their experiences and share them on social media. Ben even uses a drone to make it easier for them to record everything. And while inside an abandoned sanatorium, he scares his girlfriend. Three months later, Tina practices holding her breath underwater in the bathtub in a motel room. She soon joins Ben outside and puts her bag in their van, telling her boyfriend she's managed to hold her breath for three minutes. Then, the two eventually leave, driving to a village in southwest France. There, Tina realizes they're lost and decides to get out of the van to ask for directions. Meanwhile, Ben starts walking around and filming, saying the entire place is a dying village. A few minutes later, Tina returns with some food and leads Ben to Frez Lake, where they're supposed to go scuba diving. Ben is pissed that it's not a secret spot, but there's nothing he can do about it. So he just checks their sanatorium video, but he gets disappointed that it only has 50,000 views. Despite that, Tina just wants them to have fun and be tourists for the day, and Ben finally agrees. Ben goes to a food truck to buy some drinks, also befriending a guy drinking there. When he returns to his seat, he tells Tina that the man said there's nothing but ruins down the lake, and all the houses were destroyed before the flood. At that moment, Ben realizes that even without the tourists, Fraz Lake's never really worth their time. Luckily, for a small fee, the guy has offered to take them to an isolated arm of the lake that runs deep into the woods. Ben also says it's a secret spot, adding that there's a perfectly preserved house at the bottom of that part of the lake. Naturally, Tina is hesitant to go there, but she eventually changes her mind. Moments later, the guy, Pierre, leads the way to the secret spot as Tina drives. Ben asks Pierre what the house's area is called, but the man replies it's not on any map. According to Pierre, the region suffered a series of devastating floods about 50 years ago. Then, construction to control the water flow began in 1984 before emptying the village. Later, the valley voluntarily flooded, and that's how Fres Lake came to be. Pierre talks to Tina after telling the history of Fres Lake, finding it interesting that she speaks French too. He then informs Ben and Tina that they'll have to cover the last couple of miles by foot. At the same time, as they walk through the woods, he assures Ben and Tina that they won't regret coming with him. Once they reach the secret spot, Tina and Ben prepare their gears for diving. They also get their recording devices ready, and Pierre tells Tina that the sticker on her scuba tank is a good omen. After that, Ben reminds Tina that she has 60 minutes of air and assures her they'll be done quickly. Then, Pierre instructs them to follow the stairs down, and the couple finally dives to find the house. They discover a rover P6 as they swim, and Ben points out it's in great condition. Ben also says it's fairly common in lakes before playing heavy metal music, which annoys Tina. The two continue to swim deeper into the lake, seeing different kinds of fish. Then, they follow the stairs, and it isn't long before they reach the house. Ben and Tina swim closer to the house, where they find a crucifix, a Virgin Mary figurine, and a rosary tied to the gate. They also find a private mausoleum in the garden belonging to the Montignac family. Then, Tina asks Ben to turn the music off and stops him from going inside the mausoleum. Seconds later, Ben and Tina try to enter the house, only to see that its steel doors are sealed shut. So Ben and Tina split up to look for another way inside the house and realize it's completely shuttered up. Refusing to give up, the couple swims to the upper floor, where Ben finds an open window. Tina gets scared when a big fish suddenly comes out of the window, and unfortunately, it accidentally hits their drone. Despite that, Ben sends the drone inside the house before following it. Once they're inside, the two wonder why the people who used to live there left their furniture. Again, Tina gets scared when she sees a doll, but Ben thinks it's cool. Then, Ben says he has 87% of air left, and when Tina tells him she has 84%, he advises his girlfriend to breathe slower. Afterward, the couple continues exploring the house. However, as Ben sends in the drone, Tina says she heard a voice. Ben thinks it's only interference, so Tina just ignores it. At the same time, 
Ben learns from their sonar that there are no other fish or living things inside the house aside from them. As they proceed, Ben and Tina find some guns. They also see the Montinac family portrait, and Tina can't help but say the family members look like a bunch of freaks. They then enter a bedroom, where all the things, including video gears, are not decayed, and some pictures of children are displayed. Enjoying the experience, Ben decides to ride a wooden rocking horse. But Ben's mood suddenly changes when he sees a human silhouette behind the canopy, informing Tina they're not alone. As if on cue, the drone's light suddenly turns off, leaving Tina frightened. Although he's nervous, Ben checks what's behind the canopy and doesn't find anything there, so Tina tells him to stop freaking her out. Then, Ben tries to fix the drone as it malfunctions. Once he rebooted the drone, Ben continues exploring the house with Tina. They go downstairs and open the front doors, finding scratches on the wall. They also suddenly hear the piano playing, making Tina wonder if Pierre is messing with them. With a knife in hand, Ben sends in the drone to see what's going on in the other parts of the house, following it when it detects movement. Seeing nothing, Ben and Tina get confused as to what's setting the drone off. They then find a broken piano. So Ben says a string probably snapped from the corrosion. Ben is just too excited about the film they'll bring back that he doesn't want to think about how creepy the place is. He still wants to carry on with their exploration, going to another room and finding news clippings showing missing children. Next, Ben and Tina go to the kitchen, where the drone malfunctions again. They also find a large crucifix blocking a door, which they decide to open. After removing the crucifix, the couple opens the door and enters a dark room, forcing Ben to send in the drone first. Then, Ben assures Tina they'll be fine and asks her to follow him, and the girl eventually finds a film. Unfortunately, Ben and Tina find two corpses in chains hanging from the well. The dead man and woman are also wearing torture masks, suspended above a satanic pentagram. Frightened, Tina urges her boyfriend to quickly leave, but Ben wants to take a few pictures of the bodies before they go. Ben thinks the two were chained up alive down there before the house flooded, but he fails to answer Tina when she asks why the bodies are intact. At the same time, a door leading to another room slowly opens. Ben instructs Tina to wait for him as he investigates, only to find jars with severed human body parts. Ben soon leaves with Tina, but he doesn't tell his girlfriend what he saw behind the door. The two swim as fast as they can and head upstairs, and Tina tells Ben they're calling the cops. She says that place is a crime scene. But Ben refuses because he doesn't want their memory cards to be confiscated. Upon reaching the second floor and opening the window they entered through earlier, Tina discovers it's blocked off by a brick wall. Of course, Tina immediately panics, so Ben tells her to calm down and breathe slowly. Sadly, their nightmare is just about to start. As Ben talks to her, Tina sees a dead girl approaching them. However, the girl suddenly vanishes, and Tina starts thinking they'll never leave that place. Despite what happened, Ben tries to comfort Tina and asks her to follow him downstairs so they can check the windows there. Downstairs, Ben and Tina fail to find a way out. The windows won't break, and Ben can't open the doors too. Luckily, Tina sees the big fish from earlier, making her think there's another way in. Ben and Tina follow the fish into the room with corpses, where they eventually lose it. They realize the fish got inside the house through a small opening, and Tina gets annoyed when Ben plays some music again. Confused, Ben tells Tina he's not playing any music as she checks the well. Sad to say, a grate is blocking it, and it isn't long before the bodies disappear. Ben is nowhere to be seen too, and as Tina panics, she hurts herself from a hook. Ignoring the pain, Tina removes the hook and touches her wounded thigh, using a chain to climb to the well and desperately trying to escape. Then, something pulls her down, and all Tina can do is scream as she gets caught in the chains. Moments later, Ben shows up and helps Tina, telling her he was just right behind her. He also shows Tina the bodies when she informs him they disappeared, removing the corpse's masks and revealing they're the Montinex. Unfortunately, Madame Montanac and Mr. Montanac suddenly open their eyes, forcing Ben and Tina to swim away. As Ben and Tina flee, the owners of the house go after them. They only lose the Montanax when they close the doors in the dining hall, and that's when Ben suggests escaping through the chimney. However, since it's narrow, they have to take their tanks off. 
Ben then ties a rope around Tina's waist so they won't get separated, sending the drone up the chimney first for some light. But the shaft unexpectedly collapses, leaving the couple trapped on different floors. Afterward, Tina regains consciousness and cuts the rope using a diving knife to look for Ben. Ben soon wakes up on the upper floor, and once he puts on his tank, he realizes that Tina cut the rope. Downstairs, Tina fixes her tank and continues searching for Ben, seeing the drone and trying to talk to her boyfriend through the comms. In a bedroom upstairs, Ben desperately attempts to open a window. Then, he finds a family tree and discovers that Pierre is a Montignac. Seconds later, Ben hides under the bed when Madame Montignac enters the room, only to be found by the woman's daughter, Sarah. Meanwhile, Mr. Montignac chases Tina throughout the house. Tina soon ends up on the second floor, where she sees the drone's light become red and focus on a room. Thinking Ben is there, Tina opens the room and finds her boyfriend. But the guy is not himself and insists he's better even though his mask is leaking. As if that isn't bad enough, Ben only has 12% of air left while Tina has 8%. Ben says they're out of danger now, but Tina only thinks he's in shock and urges him to snap out of it. To make things worse, Tina feels something inside her suit, saying it's crawling up her ribs. Tina tries using a knife to open her suit, but she eventually drops it as Ben tells her it's just a snake. Sure enough, Tina sees a small snake inside her mask. Instead of helping his girlfriend, Ben tells Tina to open her mouth and swallow it, but Tina refuses and decides to take off her mask. Tina wears her mask again once she thinks the snake is gone, and Ben continues to act weirdly. She then follows Ben and tries to stop him when he says he's going to the cellar, where Ben removes a filing cabinet blocking a door. The door leads to a sitting room, but Tina doesn't find a way out. At the same time, Ben assures Tina they're safe there, saying there never was a way out of that place. Also, a film suddenly plays for them, and that's when Ben reveals to Tina that Pierre is Mr. Montignac's son. According to Ben, the Montignacs would abduct kids from the neighboring farms and sacrifice them as a part of their satanic rituals. Unfortunately for the Montignacs, the locals came to avenge their dead children. First, they killed Sarah in her own bed, but Pierre managed to escape. Then, the locals put masks of shame on Mr. and Madame Montignac intending to punish them. As Ben talks, Sarah suddenly slashes the projector screen and approaches him. Ben also convinces Tina to join them, but Tina refuses and flees through the hole on the projector screen that Sarah created. Tina soon reaches a satanic chapel and finds a shaft, only to be stopped by Ben as she attempts to escape. Ben wants to die with Tina and tells her he'll kill her, scaring Tina even more since she only has 1% of air left. The Montignacs also arrive, but before Ben can kill Tina, she takes his spare knife and stabs him first. That helps Ben come back to his senses. But as they're about to escape, Sarah stabs Ben to death. Then, the Montignacs try to stop Tina from getting away, so Tina just leaves her tank as its air drops to zero. Wasting no time, Tina swims up the shaft until she gets out of the house. Sadly, Tina runs out of oxygen just before she reaches the surface and drowns. In a post credit scene, Pierre is seen leading two divers to the lake, intending to give them to his family. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.